one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We are now on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, and all of the other social media platforms. We have an ongoing list. Today we're sitting here with Tu Ra, aka Bobby or Rob. He started his rap career from participating in numerous rap battles across the city. He has been recognized by 979 The Box. Day in a Dream, Southside Digital Media Group, and 102.5 FM. He also used to make vlogs and released a music video for his song from Bobby Trilito, which released end of October, and the music video for Boss Up released three weeks ago. Yeah, about, yeah. First of all, can you show them your drink? Oh, uh, I got a free zone, but I got my gum on there. But, oh. Yeah. Tropical Punch. Sorry. <laughs> it, used to, it used to be on that strawberry kiwi, but nah, we, we switched it up, yeah. It was like, wasn't sitting right as I grew older. I think the syrup was catching up to me. <laughs> He's an adult now. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to talk about how you transitioned from rap battling into writing music, or did you write music the whole time and then? Yeah, I get that one a lot. Um, so, like, when I first started, I was with a group, and, you know, of course, with that thing, everybody grows and has a family to take care of, and we kind of all drifted apart, so I was kind of stuck there, like, well, I still wanted to do my thing, so about, like, 2012, late 2012, I did my own solo project, and then from there, that's when I started getting into, like, showcase competitions and stuff, and then I started winning them, so I was like, man, I think I, think I got something, and I started, like, accumulating money from it, so it was dope, and then uh, from that, I jumped into, like, because I always felt like I had good lyrics and bars or whatever. Because when I first saw I used to rap like Lil Wayne, bro. Yeah. So I thought I was the man. And then um, I started getting into cypher competitions and like rap battle kind of stuff. Anything that just pretty much like you'd win money off of. Because I was trying to like win money and show my mom like, hey, or my like, family like, hey, I'm winning money from this. Like, it's not a waste of time. Yeah. So yeah, I jumped into that. And everybody started recognizing me as like more as like a lyrical guy. No one really heard my, my music. And if it if they did, it was just like, oh, it's a good song, you know. But I feel like now, as this year and the year before, like pretty much the past like two and a half years, I started really like writing records and really trying to what, like, what am I gonna do? Everybody knows I rap good or rap well or whatever. What am I really gonna say? What am I, you know? So now I'm just trying to. And thanks too for like noticing like the vlogs and stuff. No one really knows that <laughs> that shit was like really under the radar. It was just like for people on my YouTube. Yeah, the, I need to start that back up. Actually, it was, that was fun. But um. Man, definitely years, years and years of just studying, studying my favorites and just studying people that I was really like inspired. I'm, I'm a Mexican dude, so it's uh, for me, it's like, like white rappers really inspire me because they're just they're not like not that they're not welcome, but it's kind of harder for them to get in the industry. So it's just kind of like that for us too because it's so many. It's just like a small market for us, especially if we're not doing like the Spanish kind of stuff. I'm more trying to do like the backpack route and like and all this shit. Okay, we got some here. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And then uh. Yeah, so just studying and, you know, seeing, like, I go to a lot of concerts. I, I study how people perform. I study, you know, like, how they do the, the syllables and how they do the double time. and how, So, man, I don't even know the, the time, honestly. I could tell you, like, it just took years. And even when I thought back when, way back when, people said I was good. Yeah. But I felt like I was okay. Now I feel like I'm good. And, like, people are like, bro, holy shit. Yeah. Like, I can just tell because, man, back in the gap, like, we used to do shows, like, me and my homies. It would just be me, and they'll come with me. I'll bring, like, five or ten people with me. And I'm talking about we go in a cl it's like a club full of black people. And it's it's just me up there, like, throw your motherfucking H up. And then, and then, like, when I started rap, there was, like, oh, like, the whole, you could hear the crowd, like, yeah. And it was cool, especially with the cypher kind of things. Like, every time I said some people, like, the crowd would be, like, whoa. And then I'll be, like, it's working, guys. I'll look at my friends, like, yo, this is crazy. So uh, I, I didn't, I don't even know. It's definitely a process, and it's not, it's not easy. But just study, study the greats, study, you know, people you're fans of, and hopefully you can, you know, take a little something off. How do you practice for a cypher? Do you, like, freestyle? I don't really know how it works. Yeah, no, nah, hell yeah. That is a good question because, uh, man, there's this thing. It was probably, like, late 2013, early 2014. I did this thing called Jack and for Beats. It was a sponsored by Jack Daniels, and it was, like, this rap competition. And the winner gets, like, $5,000. So I'm like, bro, I got to come. I made the top 50, yeah. so I was already hyped. And then they don't tell you who's in the top 10, like, yeah. the, the day before the final, like, the actual event. So I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to make it, but I got to be prepared just in case. So I did, like, yeah, like, 
I just play like a bunch of different kind of beats and always have like certain kind of, I know if it's like a slower beat, I got to do like a double time kind of thing. Or if it's like a fast boom baby, it's like, oh yes, because I can just really just go in and not have to worry about like, keep you know, with the slow beats, it's like you got to go kind of fast. I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a thing. It's definitely like a BPM. So I try to like, I'll rap on like money trees and then I'll switch it to like still tipping. And it's like, I'm just gonna, you know, I gotta have different kinds for different. That's how I'm doing it. And that's how, yeah, that's definitely how I studied and, you know, just whatever beat they're gonna, cause you don't know what beat they're gonna play. So you just gotta, I would like to be ready. I don't like to be unprepared. That's the main thing for me. Yeah, that's kind of crazy cause like in, uh, in high school and shit, I used to uh, like have kind of like stuff that, like not, full verses but just shit like i knew that would make people be like oh yeah. so i would kind of have that but and i kind of carried that with me but as far as like if i know if it's competition or it's money on the line or it's like something i'm not gonna play around i gotta make sure i have shit yeah but also at the same time yeah it is like to me because you know how comedians have their sets yeah. but kind of you know when they first start off they're like oh fucking north dakota this place is a shithole you know <laughs> they kind of do like yeah. a thing that that caters to the people yeah. and you know that's kind of they just made that up so and yeah i kind of you know just try to say shit around the room and people are oh and then i just go into it like all right here's what i really got though you know what i'm saying that's so badass and you mentioned you're mexican me too (laughs) i like relating to people and i saw your um what music video was it papi chulo yeah i saw like the nopales and then like the people where did you film that Man, it was in this, uh, it was in this flea market, like going towards Pearland. Like you just gotta get off, like a uh, telephone, just go deep in it, and it's like pretty much you go down near Pearland. But it's like little Mexico, and I knew as soon as like I first went, I was like, bro, I'm gonna shoot a video here. And my friend was like, dude, don't do it. What the fuck? That's weird. <laughs> and so we did. We literally pulled up and we just made it. And it's crazy because all the people were just looking at us. And the, and then pr- there's one scene where I'm rapping. I'm standing and he goes like in a circle around me. And literally the people stopped walking because they seen me like shooting the shit there. And it came into like a pretty big crowd and everybody had their phones out and then once I was done like rapping the song and it was like all right fade out and all people like, yeah yeah they was it was so yeah it was so crunk it was so crunk they were really like they were with it like I think they already thought I was really famous so it was cool it was tight but thanks for watching that thing. that's super cool how what is it? and you have several music videos out right how what is your experience with them and how do you like the experiences compare I mean uh, most of the time I think only like one or two videos it wasn't my shit, but like most of the time, I like to do my own stuff. Like I'm like, all right, we're gonna do it here, and this is how we're gonna do it. Blah blah blah. I mean, I wing a lot of the shit, but I just like know the location, and I know most of the things I want to do. Like for Boss Up, I'm like, bro, I want to put the, we wanted to put the whole Ku Klux Klan outfit on a cross and burn it to like symbolize like fuck racism and shit mm-hmm. like that. But it was just like <laughs> everybody got pretty scared with the fire, so we're like, let's just do the head, <laughs> and because it's like it's a lot of fucking. We didn't want to like get in trouble. Yeah. But then, uh, and then I was like, yeah, I want to fucking rap on like the paleta man and shit while he's driving. But then it just so happened because we switched locations and then we heard the fucking horn and the paleta man was, I was like, bro, this is fate. So we got to have, so I had to go up there, sweet talk him. And then it sucks because I don't speak Spanish. So it was a fucking plot to it. So I'm like, all right, who speaks Spanish? We got to talk this man into it. Like, we'll pay him, tell him whatever. He's like, no, nah, you don't have to pay me. You know, we just told him that I was like a famous YouTube rapper. So he, he bought it. But uh, yeah, it's every, it's always, it's always uh, different. It's a weird feeling because uh, when you actually, certain videos, they're, <laughs> you just feel like a, a monkey. Like, you know, like <laughs> dance, you know, a Zoolander where he's like, <laughs> Clap it, Derek, clap it. I was like, bro, it'd be feeling weird, like, you know, but uh, it's just part of it. I feel like that with photo shoots, too. Like, it's part of the, the job or what we're trying to do, but it's just so weird. It's like, all right, can you do something different? I'm like, bro, I got, like, three poses. I was like, it's really all I got. But it's cool. I'm grateful for, like, all the, the shit, and it makes me feel like, damn, this is how it is for the pros. Like, I got to be ready now. So, yeah. I feel like I've always been like, I think that's why people kind of gravitate towards me because that's just how, and even with the music, like, if you listen to uh, enough of it, like, my shit's kind of really comical mm-hmm. in a way. Not, like, funny, right? but you just, like, I'm not, I don't take myself very seriously. Like, the difference between me and, and other artists I rap, like, man, they try to sell that, like, hard guy thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just kind of, like, I can't fake the funk, yeah. you know? So I'm just going to be me, and, and that's what it is. And I think that's why people, like, like even at my shows, like, I make jokes with the crowd. Like, I try to make people laugh and, and shit like that. Like, I was fucking rapping one time, like, in the cypher or some shit. And they did, like, shook ones. Always, they always do shook ones. I don't know why. Everyone wants to do eight mile beat. And then, so I was just like, everybody from the three. And I was like, I'm just playing. And everyone just started laughing. 
<laughs> everyone started laughing so it was like it was cool because in a way they broke the ice and they're yeah. like oh this guy's funny so yeah i just try to carry myself like that and yeah i always been like that. i never been um i never been some kind of way like i just like to keep it real and hopefully people because nowadays i feel like man with artists that i like it's not just because their music's dope it's just because i like and it's not just me it's like all fans like people buy into the person yeah. too not just the music like a lot of people don't like Lil Yachty. I love Lil Yachty because he's just, a, he's a cool kid, man. Like, he's just fucking, you know what I'm saying? And I like, uh, it's one of those things where I'm more involved into the person. And you see the vlogs and you're like, man, this guy's fucking cool. Yeah. Like, that's a, so that's why I try to be like, you know, and I'm just, yeah, I can't fake it. I can't, I'm just being me. Uh, yeah, that's a, to also <laughs> a, a very much asked question. Uh, one time I got drunk with my friends and uh, I've been wanting to get it. And I think it's just because of that day, where it's pretty, well, I was pretty wasted. And I'm like, man, just come with me, guys. Like, I want to get this shit. And they're, they're like, they were like, no, don't, bro. Like, don't. Why? Like, stop. Yeah. And I think that played a big part in me, like, going yeah. through with it. Because, like, I'm that kind of person. When people tell me don't do shit, I'm going to want to yeah. do it. So then I, I made it happen. And uh, I posted it on the gram. And my shit, like, blew up. And it was like, what the fuck? Why? It was like half and half. It was like, people were like, what the fuck? Why are you doing this? And the other people were like, bro, you're next up. This is crazy. <laughs> and um, man, yeah, it was like that too. Like, I grew my hair out and I grew like little braids kind of things. Yeah. Bro, I swear it was crazy because like, all these people are like, what the fuck? Like, no, what are you doing? You know, fuck a mumble rapper. And then all the people are like, bro, I'm with it. This shit is hard. And then, so I don't know, you know, but I got it. My mom almost disowned me. She's still trying to get me to take it off. She's like, I know a laser place. I was like, but I was like, nah, it's just, man, that's how what I am. Made you, what made you get that word, though? Yeah, well, so it's like really three things. One, like, man... I love Galiucci's, that's like my girl. Oh my and yeah, she, yeah, so she has one song called Loner, and it's like one of my favorite songs ever. And then it's also like, I love Drake. Drake is the GOAT. And uh, he said in one song, it's like, security follows me everywhere I go. So I'm actually never alone. I just always feel alone. And I, feel, I felt that like for real, for real, because I'm always with my homies and I'm always like around people. But it's just at the end of the day, man you still feel alone, and I just, I don't know, I kind of like, not that I like it like that, but it's just, man, it's just more better that way, it's more peaceful, I don't have to worry about people's problems and stuff, I just kind of like to be on my own, like a lone wolf type shit, I don't know, so, very, I don't know. So going back to the people by the person behind the music, not just the music, would you consider doing more vlogs and more stuff like that so that people can see your personality and so you can grow your personal brand? definitely yeah i fell off on the vlogs but i I wanted to get back on it it's because like i took kind of like a solid year away from music just getting like my actual personal life together but i definitely um want to start getting back on that more but i just want to get like a different program i'm on like movie maker and shit and it's like really like limited options of what you can do so i want to probably get like a new and then i want to get a gopro like there's really like man i can make some throw vlogs because i did good with what the little i had but just all this crazy shit be happening to me bro it's like i'll be going on adventures y'all don't understand like this life of like trying to be an artist bro, it's fucking crazy like and not just on the not the adventure like on the coma but just like the people too like <laughs> the girls are crazy yeah. like there's janky promoters there's like yeah. it's me going it's me like going out of town a, a lot of times I'm by myself and just like really like trying to get it and yeah. it's a, a lot of shit happens bro it's so fun I have like stories for days but um tell a story no. <laughs> give us a really really like highlight um Man, I got a bunch. I don't know. Y'all want like a funny one or one that's like, okay, like he was hungry or like, I don't give me, know. Give me, give, me, give me a funny one. Uh, fun, okay, I'll start. <laughs> this was a while. This was a long, long time ago. I was probably like 17, 16. That, that's when I was with a group. We would uh, go um, like on the road and do uh, car shows and shit. That's when that thing was, you know. Yeah. And it's crazy because I hate to trail off, but it's like I come from like that era of like really having to go out and like sell your CDs and try to get people to like now this era is like I can just post it on SoundCloud and see what it does. So it's cool. I always say that's I got a leg up because I got to see both sides of the game. But yeah, so we went out to the car shows and uh, did a show in like Victoria, Texas. It was so random, but uh, we did a show the night before too at this rundown bar. Random as hell. So. <laughs> We do the show, we're outside, everybody's drinking, blah, blah, blah. This lady comes out of nowhere, it's a black lady, I'm pretty sure she's like a prostitute or something. Yeah. She comes up to all of us because we're outside and she's like, hey, y'all know where to, 
y'all know where to get that. And then, and then one of the dudes, he was like, one of the other performers, like, nah, baby, you tell us, we from the age, baby, you tell us where is that. And then one of the dudes is like, nah, fuck that, bro. She's a narc. She's a narc. She's a fucking cop. She's like, well, you see, you see a wire on me, dude. She pulls out her boobies, like full flesh boobies. She didn't even have a bra on, and she looks like, a, does this look like a wire right here? And then she starts bouncing them, and then all like my crew, they're like, oh, hey, my boy right here, because. I'm like 16, 17. My, my boy right here, he never touched a girl's boob before. And I look at him mad as hell because I'm like, bro, you know I touch some boobies. Like, don't put me out there like that. She's like, so you never seen no titties, baby? She starts coming to me. Bro, she puts her boobs on my, and I'm like, I kind of didn't know what to do. I just started laughing. And then, yeah, like towards the end, I just kind of grabbed a little feel. But <laughs> it was just so random. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> do you do shows often? How often? You do, right? Since your album released, I'm assuming you do more of your album. Yeah. Like I started, I kind of like sh um, like drifted away from the battle stuff only because I kind of wanted to be more serious like as an artist and now with this album out and so many sides to it it's like bro what you got the song with the guitar you got the you got like some funk type shit man this is like one of my favorite songs I probably ever did was with Dende it's like a funk song like man it's crazy yeah 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 he definitely did yeah and we usually do that song together but it was just a, we all kind of had short sets so we kind of but. I always, I always try to do that song because it's like one, literally one of my favorite songs I ever did, and it's so different. So I just been trying to do the putting that kind of stuff on the forefront. And I got a show like back to back show like next month, and I'm gonna probably do more like acoustic stuff too, and just like kind of show the range. Like I can do the rap stuff, but it's like I'm trying to you know trying to sell the the sizzle. It's like man, I'm very uh, realistic about things, and I understand like my stance where I am right now. And probably next year, I'm going to, like, fund my own tour. I've done it before, but, like, not – it's been pretty stretched out. But I, I go around, and I do – like, I do my own shit, you know. I'm, it's just me, and, you know, my homies help me when they can. And it's just – I see myself like a Hobson kind of or, like, a – not as far as being just, like, a lyrical guy. But I know, like, starting out, I'm probably going to have, like – not even 50 people at each show, but I want to, I want to do like, my plan is to get big enough to have like steady tour, mm. steady tour dates and like a solid tour, maybe like 15, 20 cities. That's the goal, you know what I'm saying? But that's just, that just has to come from me, like uh, pushing my shit to the major block and like just trying to get my shit out there. But I'm, man, I'm just, you know, people are like, man, I'm gonna get a tour bus and I'm a blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, it's gonna be me, and a couple of homies in a fucking van and yeah. we're gonna be, and it's gonna be like, probably 50 people each city but those people are gonna rock out and like yeah. if they fuck with like what i'm trying to do then yeah so i just try to keep it real and that's what i want like at least to start out and have that solid like touring route and then you know just keep building after that but you know i'm just man i just want to rock i'm just gonna remember times like those like man i did a show like in new orleans like in 2016 or some shit it was literally like 15 people bro we fucking it was sick, and it was cool because none of the people knew me. Probably like three people that knew me, yeah. but the rest of the people there they stayed because I was like the last guy, yeah. and they were like, "Holy shit, this guy's dope!" And like everyone's jumping and everyone's into it. So I'm like, "Yo, this is fucking sick!" And I'm always gonna remember times like that because it was like, "Bro, this is like what I do it for." Like, yeah. so yeah, I see myself like just you know a uh, uh, kind of like an underground king kind of guy, and and hopefully working my way up like maybe like the Puyas and the. And the Suicide Boys and all those kind of guys because they're not as far as like my music's like that, but they have a, a solid following where they can just constantly tour and like Ritz and all and like Dizzy Ride and shit like that. Like just those people that you really don't see them on the mainstream mainstream, right. which also like I would like to do that too. And I feel like my new music is like aiming towards that, especially like the Make Time and like the funk kind of records. Like I think those are big records and it could put me in a in a bigger spotlight. But I just that's like the game yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. I would say like man, I'm. I'm I'm just grateful, like, I've made it this far, and, like, you just don't understand, like, when I, when I talk to people and they tell me, like, really nice things, and, bro, that shit is, like, the, I'm good here, like, I'm made, I'm not good here, but, like, I'm happy, like, damn, like, motherfuckers sit outside with me and talk to me for, like, 30 minutes, like, bro, I never met you, but they're just, like, bro, you got the potential, and you got the, man, bro, you need to do that, bro, I swear, like, I don't even know you, bro, but you gonna, that shit is live, you know what I'm saying, for real. So just like really pr pushing this album, um, trying to promote it as much as I can, trying to get on uh, like trying to get on some bigger blogs, man. That's really the move. And uh, I've been trying to like get a publicist 
but it's really hard because in Houston there's really not like we don't have that kind of machine like as far as like LA or New York they kind of got all that stuff out there here it's like we don't really have like the industry like that Mm -hmm. so I don't know just trying to really finesse my way into certain situations and I'm meeting like a lot of new people that are like hey I I know blah 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 blah, boom so it's cool like Amy and all them that that there's the bounce interns she's like really helping me out and like setting me up and she gets me like paid gigs and like, I performed at this fucking pool party, and it was the sickest thing ever, because, like, none of these people knew me, but, like, they're just like, clapping their hands with me and shit. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm an Illuminati. I was just, con- <laughs> I was controlling everybody. It was crazy. Puppeteer. That's what I'm saying. It was dope. But just, like, even that kind of experience just made me realize, like, yeah, I'm I'm ready for uh, a bigger audience, you know? I think my music is for, for the masses, especially the new album. And it's cool that I also get to... Uh, have the rapping ability and stuff and that's another thing too i'm trying to get on a uh, sway i was on sway in like 20 i don't know i was on sway. yeah i was on sway so i'm trying to get back up there and do the fire friday and i feel like if i um come correct as they say it hopefully it'll you know get a get a couple good hits and just get the following going that's a, that's really a big thing of mine too trying to get a, more followers and not just follow but more fans people are going to buy into the music and come to the shows and then, uh, so like I said, like blogs and Sway and all those fucking like no chill Latino meme pages and shit. They be posting like rappers and stuff and the, the videos get like a lot of hits and like the comments are real. Like, so I'm trying to get my shit on there because I know like, man, it just, I feel like out of all the people, they get like half a million views. Out of those people, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a couple people that fuck with me. So I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Just keep building that. And then, uh, yeah, so I got those shows coming up too on uh, the 5th and 6th, like back to back shows. Just uh, make sure I'm going to keep promoting the album, and yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm trying to work on new music, but I'm just kind of taking it slow, and you know, I just want to make sure I promote the album the right way, and uh, and then start on the music again. And about your album right now that you released in October, how did that, how long did you work on it? How, what was the process like? And then afterwards now, what is your process to push it? Yeah, that's, uh, so as far as like pushing it, I'm definitely trying to get like a publicist. I'm definitely trying to just, it's cool, and it's cool because I know, a lot of people that know people so it's cool because that's in that sense it's like i'm trying to get on bigger blogs like pitchfork and like mm-hmm. too dope i know blogs is not really maybe the wave anymore but i just feel like it still would help i feel like i feel like when there i feel like when there's somebody uh that i not that i know personally but i see you know some people get on like uh, mass appeal and it's cool like that, but i feel like man my and i'm not trying to be cocky i don't feel like i'm better than nobody because i'm not but my shit has a certain thing that like you know what i'm saying i feel like if people just watch it one time here one time it's like Okay, let me look into this guy. That's what it takes. That's why I'm just trying to get those big breaks like that. But the album, it took me probably like a solid like two years to make. And that's just because I've just done a lot of songs, scrapped a lot of songs, kept a lot of songs. And then some songs I'm like, man, I'm not going to do it. And then I started doing, when I did the song with Dende, it kind of like opened up a whole new thing. People were like, holy shit, bro, this is like something you never did. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fucking start, I'm gonna start mixing it up. So blah, blah, I started working with my boy Sai, and he plays bass, and we, I started getting all the instrumentation shit and like getting that down. And then I started like learning guitar. I'm still kind of shitty at it, but like I'm good enough to, to breeze by. And then I made the song with the guitar, and then just like, now I feel like I'm really coming with it as an artist. So it was really just um, just making more music, and it's like, man, fuck these songs. I'm going to do these songs. And and my engineer was kind of pissed, like, God damn, what about these? What about these? Like, I have so many songs, but I really just used, like, nine of them or however many is on the album. And then, uh, yeah, I forgot to share the question. I'm sorry. I get to so lost in my shit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to, like, be out more in the in the, uh, in the the scene because, you know, loner or whatever. I'm just kind of, like, trying to. Uh, and it sucks, too, because it's uh, being in this industry is very, uh, that's the thing, too. I say to everybody, it's so fucking i hate i hate going against who i am like my character you know what i'm saying i'm not like kind of the guy that like it can be fake or like shake people's hands that i know probably get me to a further place but i know i don't fuck with them or they really don't fuck with me like that they just look at me as something like oh we can get something from this guy with something like that and that's the 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 flip side which i really kind of dislike about this little music game or whatever so I'm just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of hard going against my own self, and it's like, I got to swallow that pride, and like, you know, I just hate kissing ass and all that shit, and I know it's part of it or whatever, but it's just like, I've been in situations where I know like, man, this shit is not for me, this shit is like, why am I here? I'm only here just because I'm doing this favor for this person who can later on do me a favor, and I feel like already right there, that's a fucking dumb mindset to be in. I don't like, I don't want to use people, you know, and I'm, uh, 
but it's just, you know, being in certain situations or I'm like, I'm on a certain bill that I was like, why am I on this? I hate, I hate, I hate this box that they put me in because of my skin color. As soon as they say my name, they say six other rappers that are Mexican and I'm pretty sure y'all know who they are, you know? So it's like, why, do, why am I with that? My thing is so different from them. I don't. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't. And then with the flip side is I get mad when they do, like, Latino Fest. And I'm like, oh, I ain't on it. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm so weird, bro. I'm so weird. It's just a forever. It's a forever a battle. Biggie off top. Lil Wayne. Um, damn. <laughs> I love I love Ludacris. I love Ludacris. I love Ludacris, though. But he's, like, he has a real big influence on my style, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm t- I gotta finish off. Let me see. Okay, Biggie, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, early Kanye West. Mm-hmm. I love Tribe. I really do love Tribe, bro. For real, for real. And then, damn, this is tough, man. Fuck. Mm-hmm. All right, if she was a rapper. <laughs> she is good. You heard the K Tronada record that she did? The K Tronada record that just came out? Dude, it's so good. And it's like not even like, you know, she usually does like love ballads. Like, no, that shit hits. She's like, she's calling some bitches out. Yeah. Is it like, um, I heard the 10%? Yes. Is that it? Yes, it's definitely it. As did it, that's it. And then, uh, yeah, I guess so. Man, fuck. Man, I want to say Pimp, but I don't even know. I love Pimp, but I don't know if he's in my top five. Damn, it's, it's going to take forever. But yeah, Biggie, Lil Wayne, Kanye West. I gotta say Eminem, I guess, and then Tribe. It's because I love old Eminem, new Eminem, bro. I don't know. So that's one another thing too. Like, do you consider if you top five, if you really, because I put Lil Wayne in there because I love Lil Wayne till now. I still love Lil Wayne, but Eminem, like, man, his past couple albums I ain't even been rocking with. Biggie, I'm always gonna. Look, I love his whole cat. Like, is your favorite because you gotta love him all the way through. So I don't know if Eminem really gets on there, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the most part. Then Hard Six is ludicrous because he, he's a monster. He's a monster. They said it from like when he does like how low can you go? Like you kind of like all right, but but he a monster when he really get down. When he really get down. And what can we expect from you in say the next six months? Um, growth, of course. More music, more visuals, crazy visuals too. Really like trying to step up the visuals and add like a little shock value and stuff like that. So more videos, more music. More shows and just hopefully more like more of a following and more of a like stamp in the game. I feel like um there's artists up there that like everybody refers to and it's like yeah they're making moves. I just kind of want to get myself in that too because I feel like I really been putting in the work, but I still have so much to prove. So I guess it, it you know I don't want to feel entitled, but hopefully like I'm one of those top guys that's like oh I'm next out of Houston this guy here. So hopefully that and um, yeah that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do my own show. I usually do my own show and try to like sell it out or whatever. I did it once like uh, last year. Was it last year? Yeah, last year in February. It was fucking dope as fuck. Like I just, it's just crazy that people come, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was bad. It was just humbling. And so, yeah, now I'm going to try to do like House of Blues and do like the the Bronze Peacock and mm-hmm. hopefully sell it out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, by then I'll probably, I have those two shows back to back with So Far Houston. They're really a dope little company and they uh, yeah, or fourth and fifth, I don't know, but I know it's like a show, and then at another spot the next day is another show, and those shows are cool, because they're like really intimate, and like nobody there knows me, so it's like I get to reintroduce myself, and I get to be this other thing, it's like, yeah, I might not know about all this, but this is me right now, so yeah, and then just, yeah, just maybe like more moves, like more, I want more blog placements, more, you know, more exposure and stuff like that, so, sorry. Are you excited for your 97.9 interview? Well, yeah. I fucking love Jessica and Tex and all them who support us up there, like all the Latinos. And yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in there and show ass. Hopefully, what is that? What is that? It's like in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure. It was supposed to be before then, but it's like all the holidays and stuff. But she's like, I haven't forgot about you because she heard the album too. And, you know, I already got like a mini interview, but it didn't really count because it was like at a, uh, like a big event thing. So. She wants to like sit down in the studio, so I'm so the hell yeah, I'm ready. Like yeah, I'm super excited. I want to see what she's gonna talk about. I just don't like uh, the, the usual questions, you know what I'm saying? I like, you know, what I'm saying y'all coming with some good shit. So thank you guys too, appreciate it. Keep streaming the album at OMG, the number two in a row on everything, literally Twitter, uh, Facebook, and then uh, Bobby Trolito on Spotify. All the stuff y'all are on, I'm also on. So y'all keep streaming the album and. Showing support, it really means a lot. And everyone who's buying it, too, actually pressed up a couple copies and 
got to sell them. So it's like I went platinum in the hood. It really, yeah. you know what I'm saying, made a pretty little buck off of it. But um, just everyone is supporting, man. It's dope. Like, fuck, it's crazy. Like, I didn't, back then, it's like, to now, it's like, fuck, bro, that shit crazy. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, just keep up with me, and I'm going to always be doing dope shit, man, and try to work with all the other artists and, you know, stuff like that.